The reason I think people struggle with death and dying is it's fearful. Is someone gonna be sad, they break down and they cry. They don't know if they have a tissue, or are they gonna put their arm around somebody? Are they gonna expect that they have to do any number of things? The worry and the fear drives the concern about how are we doing this? How long is this gonna take? Um, I'm not equipped, I don't know how to do this. Or maybe they're sad too, and they don't know how to express their sadness alongside somebody who's sad. It's my hope that with making this video is that we talk about what we can do to support someone who's grieving, but it's also really important to talk about what not to do. I think our culture tends to isolate bereaved people, especially when it comes to pregnancy and pregnancy loss and infant loss. It's not easy to talk about. It's excruciatingly painful, and it's very, very sad, so. I think that people are worried they won't know how to handle someone who starts to cry, who crumbles, can't get their thoughts about them, and that they won't, they'll say the wrong thing. They don't know how long they're in for it. Like, how long is this sadness and crying gonna happen? I mean, how long do I have to sit here? I don't have, I don't know what to say. So there's a lot of fear wrapped up in it, I think. And just their own uncomfortability with death and dying. When I'm talking to a family who has just experienced a loss, a child loss or baby or pregnancy, I think it's important just to give a listening ear, right? To just let them share their story, talk about their baby and just listen. I think that's really, really, really important. Um, giving unwanted advice isn't a good idea or trying to like relate to them. Ask them about their health and wellness. You know, did you eat today? In the early stages, things like, have you had something good to eat? Are you drinking enough water? May I, can I bring you something? Um, the simple things that you can do. You, instead of asking them, for example, how are you? You say, well, how are you today? something that's more specific and less vague so that the person who's grieving can think about a very finite thing because there's just too much going on. Words can be really damaging, even though you might not think that it's being hurtful or harmful to someone. Things like, oh, you'll have another baby, or oh, God needed your baby, or are you done being sad? <laughs> Right? Like, those are, you know, words can really, really be hurtful. Going back to work after the death of your child can be really, really difficult. I mean, most of us have to work to earn a living. You know what I mean? Like, we have to go back to work. And so ways that um, an employer can be supportive would be, um, you know, with Mason specifically, you know, they sent me flowers, they sent me a card, they checked up on me. And then when I went back, they helped me build a schedule to my day. Like, hey Liz, if you need to go, we have a substitute teacher on hand. They can totally take over for you. My boss was actually a, a psychologist in her previous life before she became the coffee buyer at Starbucks. And when my daughter died, she actually had the people from Nissa come in and speak to the work group so that they could ask all the questions that they wanted to ask about sudden infant death syndrome. How do you manage, you know, what should we say, what shouldn't we say? Um, so when I came back to work, I didn't have to do all that work. I kind of didn't. So my team, my immediate work team, already knew what kind of what to expect at some level and had a little bit of a plan about how to work with me um, and incorporate me and catch me up and all those things. And so Maybe that's that's a huge gesture, but I think getting some information to the coworkers that maybe somebody can look, we have resources that we could supply to, to a boss or to a manager, a team manager, and then they can say, hey, here's some things we should all look at and be prepared for. We basically have a do's and don'ts of helping people grieve worksheet, so we could easily send that or electronically or otherwise, so people have something to work off of that's tangible, and then it can help them be prepared. If they want to know, well, what is SIDS? What isn't it? We can help sort of prepare people for their entry back into work. 
it, like I said, it's the little things. We, it doesn't have to be over the top. It could be if somebody sent me a little text of little pink roses, that would be very sweet. But someone sent me a text on Lucy's birthday just saying, I know I'm thinking of Lucy today. That's great. It's just giving cards, making phone calls, sending a text message. <laughs> like, hey, how's it going today? You know, I don't know if everybody has necessarily a symbol for that reminds them of their baby. Maybe it's a place. Maybe it's a passage out of the Bible or a book or a poem or something. So sometimes the symbols, if someone has one, and if not, just a simple gesture. I like it that somebody sends me a card every year. My sister's always good as she makes a donation every year on Lucy's birthday and usually around Christmas, she makes a donation to Northwest Infant Survival and SIDS Alliance and I get a notification from the organization that says a donation has been made in Lucy's memory. And so for me, that's like the birthday gift or the Christmas gift that she would otherwise be getting. I'm not gonna give her a gift. So this is the way that somebody remembers her. So those little pieces that knowing me, like what's important to me, this organization's important, so somebody made a donation. So just being a little thoughtful, like what is that thing that's important to my friend who's grieving that w says I'm paying attention. If you have a friend that's grieving, that's going through a loss, it's really important to be patient with them, to be understanding, to call them and check up on them, send a text message. Don't think that we don't want to hear from you as a bereaved parent. Like we want to know that people care about us um, you don't have to understand, you don't have to relate to our grief, but just a simple, hello, how are you today? Is there anything I can do for you? I think not forgetting us and not forgetting our child is one of the best things that a friend can do.